right, we're back. Thank you for the pass off, pass Brian. Okay, so I received the repair kit that I ordered off of Amazon. A link will be in the description for the plunger. Now, unfortunately, it does not come with instructions, but I'm assuming it's just the opposite of how I pulled it apart because this has a complete replacement for the plunger. It has the new plunger. The spring, the spring kit and everything. So what we're gonna do is use, this is our model on how it's supposed to look like in the end. And we're gonna look at this and figure out what we have to do to add those pieces on. Now, this seems to be sealed on. This is held on by a spring clip. So what we're gonna do, all right, here, let me, get, so you can get a good look at this. So this is the new unit. They didn't put the base in. So what we're going to have to do is pull this off, pull all this off. Sorry. Pull this piece out, pull this off and all this and install these pieces. It looks like there's more than one system for the uh, dual fuel system. I want to replace it with the exact same thing because then I know I'll get a correct seal. It did come with a spare spring clip because they probably figured there was a 50-50 chance that you would need to replace it. And unfortunately spring clips, they don't come off easy. Just trying to figure out the best way to do it without damaging materials. All right, I'm back campers. So what I did was I'm grabbing a small screwdriver and very, very gently so I don't damage anything. Going up underneath. And getting the spring clip so it's no longer in the valley that holds it in place. As you can see, I've got two up. So we're just gonna work around to the third and then slowly work back around. And there we go, it's off. Very carefully pull all these pieces off. Hold on to them because I might need them later. And then you put the metal cap with the oil on first. And then the spring goes on. So it's now spring loaded again. It's going to give you good back pressure. This piece is the lock clip. This holds it onto the tank. We're going to put this on last. So the next thing to go on is our plunger. And then what you do is you just take, once your plunger's back on, everything's on, you're just gonna take and push the snap ring down and work your way around again until the teeth of the snap ring are pushed into, there's a small groove that all this lies in. And then you just give it a quick, a little bit of a tug, not too much pressure, just enough to make sure it's not going to come off. And that's it. That's all. It's all reassembled. So now we're going to put this back on. Be very careful. Um, this, the plunger I got is just a little bit wider than the mouth, which is what you want anyway, so that you get a nice tight seal. So what I'm doing is I'm just slowly pushing it in and rotating around because I don't want to rip it or damage it. Yeah, and that's got a lot of back pressure now. And now the retaining ring has two small holes in it. 
So we're going to we're line up the cap with the holes in the base of our tank. Yes, this is the part that gets tricky, at least for me. If you have a better eye hand coordination, it might be easier. And then, as you can see, we're going to have to bend that open to get it all the way across. So keep your finger on this side. I'm going to grab a pair of uh, channel lock pliers because they're angled. They're, they allow you to get a little bit more leverage. We're going to stretch this out and over so it gets into the other hole. And there we go. It's all on. And if you've, and the test that Colin recommends to see if you're getting good seal is put your finger over this air hole. And if you, I'm having a hard time pushing it when I let go, a bunch of air came out. So that tells me that our friend, oh, it's already clo fully closed. Let's open it up, see what happens. You do this test when it's closed because then you're just getting air pressure into the cylinder. But so now I know that I have a working seal that the tank is good or should be good. We're, we'll find hopefully the, the rest of the tank works. So our next step is going to require some gloves. So looking at this unit, it has gotten some use, but it's been a while since it's been used. And I want to make sure that I don't have any clogs or anything. White gas is a dirty fuel. It produces a lot of soot and such, much like wood does. So you're going to get a lot of buildup inside the... You're gonna get a lot of buildup inside. So what I wanna do is before I try using it, I'm gonna take off the burners and inspect the piece, inspect inside the burners, inspect the burners themselves. So what I'm seeing here is a little bit of rust, a little bit of soot. These are a little rusty, but not bad. Probably were kept in a damp area. Now, I'm pretty sure I can salvage these. If you can also go to Coleman's website, they still sell uh, replacement burner spacers. So you can always do that. These aren't in too bad a shape, but I'm just going to clean them up a little anyways. So what I have is a plastic bristle brush. You don't want to use metal and some brake parts cleaner. The advantage of brake parts cleaner, especially when we're dealing with metal is and stuff that you're going to be running flammable chemicals through is it evaporates clean, it evaporates quickly. Your hands will feel a little cold while using it. And then you can just, and it's designed to get most dirt, grease, grime off because for, so it gets brake dust off, grease, any sort of automotive material. So, That's where we're going to start. Now it looks like the tubes are okay, but it does not hurt to take the straw, 
for your brake parts cleaner. Put it in the hose. Just run it through. And then you can pick up some pipe cleaners. You can also at the dollar store and get a whole pack of them and then do this. They, they believe it or not, work quite well for cleaning. You can also go and to a, a specialty store and get brushes designed just for doing this. I like to work on a budget when I can. Just gonna run a few brushes in since I'm just doing two brushes right now because that's all that's really fitting the hose. Nothing's really coming out. So I don't think this got too much use or abuse. It's fairly clean. But again, I did get this second hand, so I always want to treat it as if it was used roughly. So now that I have everything cleaned out in here, we're going to start cleaning out our cleaning off the burner spacers. So we're gonna, again, hit them with a little bit of our friend, break, the brake parts cleaner. Scrub them off a little bit. Take a rag. This is actually a type of paper towel. It's called shop paper towels. So They're a little heavier duty than your standard home paper towels. So we're just gonna go piece by piece, clean up. Now, your instinct might be to use a rust remover on these to clean them up. I would recommend against that because most rust, most rust removers have some sort of lubricant on them and it's us they're usually flammable. And we're already gonna be putting something a flammable gas in and I don't want to risk uncontrolled flame or, or fire. Might help if I put the base plate. Now I'm doing this one side at a time. One, so I don't mix up parts. Two, so that I can look and go, did I make a mistake here? Did I skip a step? And that's exactly what I did. I started putting the spacers that the flame ran up through down and forgot to put our shield down. So go shield, lower spacer, and then you're just building it like a sandwich. And when I'm just doing one piece at a time, spray them down. Hit them with the brush real quick, and then dry them off. The other advantage of the towel is it will sometimes grab stuff that the brush leaves behind. So, and while doing this, there is a kind of a pattern. The burner is made out of flat pieces, and then ridged pieces, and then flat pieces. The top one, oh, no, those are not, those were just rusted together. So it's basically a sandwich you have flat piece, corrugated piece, flat piece, and you just keep doing that all the way up to the top. So there's a lot of uh, repetition when you're working on this stuff. I recommend wearing gloves while doing this because the brake parts cleaner is considered, uh, can be hazardous to your skin. It's just good safety thinking. And that glove is shot. Always make sure you have more than one glove. I'll be right back. All right, I am back. I got a heavier duty nitro glove. I wasn't thinking and I just grabbed the gloves I had in my garage and they're a little lighter weight. 
when you're doing stuff like this or just like working on an automobile, if you want a very heavy duty glove, because you don't want to expose your skin any more than you have to. And if you're working and not paying attention to the condition of your glove and your glove has ripped open or completely disintegrated, it's kind of defeated the purpose of having the glove. There we go. So, my left side is completed. Now the last step is to take your bolt, give it a quick little spritz. What I'm doing is I'm holding the assembly with my fingers while I screw it down. That way things don't shift too much. You don't want to screw it down too tight because you don't want to collapse those corrugations. And once you've done one side, it is exactly the same on the other. Okay campers, it's all back together. Now all that is left is to well, clean out any like large piece of garbage, is to fill up the tank and see how it's working. So I'll be right back, I need to get some fuel. Okay campers, I'm back. I have a canister of white gas right here. And I put it Last time I used it, I made sure it was tightly closed, which you should do. Just remember when you do that, it's gonna be a little harder to open. So I already have my funnel. We're gonna, I'm not gonna pour a lot in, just enough to test it. Because whenever you're dealing with flame and you're unsure of how well your equipment's working, especially if it's something you just rebuilt, you want to have a limited amount of fuel so that it can burn itself out if the, the safety stop working. Okay, so always put your cap on before you light. Put your grill down. We're gonna set this up as if we were gonna cook on it. Okay, so everything's closed. And we're gonna pump this 40 times. Oh, whoops. One, okay, two turns to the left, and now 40 times. Okay, there we go. Now it says to close it back up. Grab your lighter. They say a match, but I prefer to use a grill lighter. Preferably one that's not empty. No, it's got fuel. Okay, this grill lighter is out of fuel. Always check your grill lighters before you go camping. I'll be right back, I've got a spare. Okay, 
So I just had a little trouble with the the valve because this hasn't been used in a long time. There was an issue with it being rusted. I'm gonna have to do some more pumping because I am not getting anything yet. Okay, campers, uh, it's still not lighting. So, gonna close everything. I got everything shut down. I'm gonna pull it out. Open this up full. What I'm doing is I'm seeing if I can feel any pressure from the hose or from the tank. Okay, so it feels like we're starting to get somewhere. Okay, so the mistake I was making is I wasn't blocking the release valve with my finger. So I wasn't actually building up any pressure. What's nice is Coleman usually puts the instructions on lighting their grills right in heat resistant paint on the grill. Okay, so we're locking that. So now we should have pressure. So we're gonna hook that back up. Put it in the lighting position, which is this valve up. Then we're gonna open the valve. I got a little, little bit of flame and then nothing. Oh, there we go. So the, this white gas right now is burning extremely clear. Like I'm just getting a little bit of blue flame. So it's hard to tell. That means it's burning very hot. They don't want to check the crossover pipe. So, get it open up, run it through. Not getting a lot of pressure. So I'm worried that I'm either not getting enough pressure or that I did not leave the grill long enough to... Okay, so it looks like I had some of uh, the brake parts cleaner, had it all dissolved. I thought it had a small puddle, I figured that would dissolve, dissolve real quick, but it didn't. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try this one more time. I think this is why I prefer propane. Now I have used one of these grills with a propane adapter before. It worked okay, but it wasn't very clean, so it kind of broke. Or it, it, it didn't cook very well because I hadn't pulled it apart and cleaned it. That's why I cleaned it th this one immediately because the last one had a lot of soot buildup from the white gas. <sighs> And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're doing this properly, after about 10 pumps, it's gonna get very hard. And that's good because that means you're building up gas pressure. Okay. If you press it and push it down, press it to close it and spin the tank, I, I think I that's how I, this time I felt less pressure be lost. So 
we're going to put this in the light position, get my lighter lit, and there we go. I can hear it, but it's not lighting. I'm going to try lighting it one more time, and then we're going to... I know it will light. I might have to pull it apart and recenter the spacers. I might not be getting enough fuel through, or I just did not pump it enough. Lighting position on. That was 50 pumps. Okay, so I'm hearing the gas coming out, but I'm not getting any... Light. Oh, here we go. We're getting some flame. Okay, so it looks like the problem is, is this unit has a small leak or it still has some brake parts cleaner in the hose. I thought I, in the pipe because it didn't light up around the burner. It actually lit up in the gas tube. So I'm going to leave this for now, let it cool leave it for a week, let it dry, and then we're gonna try it again. And hopefully it will light next time. But this is, I've had issues with uh, the tanks before on white gas burners. That's why I've either converted them to propane, plus I, propane's easier to transport, or I just buy a propane grill. Again, I bought this for the channel to try and you know, show it and we'll just see what happens. All right, campers, uh, until uh, next week when we try this again, we'll see you then. All right, campers, I'm back. It's been about three weeks. This is plenty dry. I did do a test beforehand just to practice with it. So one thing I've learned you wanna do, you wanna open this all the way up. Don't be afraid to, especially when you're first getting started, light it all the way up. So the first burner is running. Now I'm going to open up the second burner. What I'm doing before I open it, I am putting up the my lighter right on it. I'm using a small butane torch. I crank this up with 50 pumps and it already appears that I'm losing pressure. Okay, so it's it's working. I did get it working. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video where I just talk about pros and cons and how I feel about the white gas. All right, campers, so that's the end of this uh, fixing up this old white gas grill. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave a comment below or contact me on Facebook, The Casual Car Camper on Facebook. I will leave a link below. And remember, as always, as long as you're having fun, you're doing camping right.